Hello, this is Faith of Faith in Books. How are you doing? I'm just going to do a review of a book I just finished a couple days ago and also maybe a quick update. But the book I just finished was uh, The Little Minister by J.M. Barry. This is, I didn't want to read this whole book because it's it's kind of fragile and, and falling apart. So I had to be very careful because I was reading it in bed a lot and I, I didn't want to like drop it off the bed or I had to be very careful. It's it's not in good shape actually. Um, I think I inherited this from a parent or something, but, um, or a grandparent, but I, this was a buddy read with Janelle of uh, Too Fond of Books and uh, it was delightful. It gets an A from me. Um, it was just, um, it's one of those novels that's really like just dripping in nostalgia. <laughs> like um, it may, it kind of reminded me a little bit of Lorna Doone, even though I've never finished Lorna Doone, but Lorna Doone has that same um, quality about it where you're sort of, you're looking back, somebody's looking back on their life and they're telling the story of something and it's very romantic. Um, and um, and a lot of the character of the book is is comes from the place where it's set, the very uh, bucolic nature of the of the place and how quaint uh, and old fashioned it is. And that's this. This is, has a very um, one of the things that I it wound up being a plus, but at first it was a little daunting. Was the heavy Scottish dialect, um, and it did slow me down. Um, at first, but I got used to it and I just looked up words, although I keep forgetting what they mean. Like there's this one word, S-P-E-I-R, I think, and I keep forgetting what it means. I have to look it up again. <laughs> um, but, but there was, a, you, you could look it up actually, you can Google uh, Scottish dialect and then put the word in and it will tell you. So that helped me. And I just started to get used to it. Like I just started to just know what it meant from the context and from seeing it repeated. Um, even if I couldn't exactly define it, you know? Um, so, so I, that, that stopped being a problem. Um, but, and it actually, to me, it kind of lent the charm and it was almost like exotic to me, uh, the language. So, um, it's a story about a man looking back and you don't know who he is exactly and how he's connected to the main characters. Um, but you find out as the book goes along, there's really two mysteries, the mystery of him and his connection with the main characters. And also the mystery of the gypsy girl that, um, the little minister falls in love with. And we, we don't know her background, her story. So there's two mysteries that are kind of working themselves out. The beginning of the book is very charming. It's kind of slow and building character. You really get to know the little minister, his backstory, his personality, his relationship with his mother, um, the whole character of the town, the whole character of the church that he is the minister of, the old, the A-U-L-D, licht, L-I-C-H-T, old liked church um and um so you really get the flavor and the character of of the place setting which it's in a little village called thrums and um and just the nature of everything and and then it starts to pick up pace and there's a real i mean there's a there's a part in the middle where it's exciting because there there's um there has been a riot the the weavers have rioted and um so there's the, the the soldiers come in to arrest those who who had been rioting, and so there is this excitement going on at first, and then it kind of calms down, and and you focus on the love story, but it's not a love story yet. It's kind of a how they meet and how they get to know each other, and and all this other conflict is going on at the same time. And then the second half of the book is a page turner, and you just just so much happens. Um, and it, it winds up very, very satisfactorily, except I did not understand the very last thing. I did not understand why something couldn't happen or why this person said they had broken their promise. I, I just didn't get it. I feel like maybe I didn't read closely enough. Um, but that was a minor thing. I really, I, the whole thing is delightfully charming. So well written that the characters are funny 
um, but but you have, feel a warm affection even towards the problematic ones. Um, there's everyone is human, um, and the little minister is quite the hero at the end. And uh, yeah, I I I really I really I give it five stars. And it made me, and I enjoyed reading it with Janelle because she had some insights and it was good to, to read it with her. At first, we were going to read just two chapters a day and we were going to be done by the 21st. But it got so exciting, the second half, that we just could, <laughs> we couldn't wait. So we finished it up early. Um, and Janelle, if you're watching this, um, I looked up J.M. Barry in on Wikipedia. And he has several books, or at least three. Let me just say three books that I remember because I'm not looking at Wikipedia now. Where these all seem to involve the same people. Like there's a book about the old licked or old light church. There's a book that he wrote um, that has the title Thrums in it about the village Thrums. And there's another book uh, titled Margaret Ogilvy. So, uh, which apparently was his mother's name. So I wonder if he wrote a bunch of novels and they're all sort of are in this world. I would love to find them. I think they're out of print. The only one that's in print is The Little Minister and then Peter Pan, which is what he's famous for. And then he wrote a lot of plays too, and they seem to be available. But I'll have to, I'm going to hunt for the other books because I really, I read Peter Pan, of course, myself a long time ago. And then I read them to my children um, a long time ago. And um, just the writing, he just is a, a wonderful writer. And so um, I'd like to read more by him, but it looks like his plays are the most easily available. But I'd love to see those other books to see if maybe this was a world he created. Maybe this was the most popular and that's why it's still in print. Um, but just, that's just so interesting. So, um, so anyway, so I really enjoyed The Little Minister. I, I highly recommend it. So then just for an update, was that all I wanted to say? I think so. Just for an update for my reading. Uh, let's see. I'm still reading Evelina for Feb Regency. I've been listening to it mostly on audio, which is the, the version I have with Judy Dench. Only she only reads a few letters. Um, but that one is is really good. Um, but they, I don't know who the actress is who who does most of it. Who is Evelina? She's really good. But it just takes me longer to find time to listen to audio, and so I just picked up the book and uh, now I won't really want to finish it. So I'm, now I, I I'm I'm actually reading this, um, and I'm almost done. I'll be finished today or tomorrow at the latest. So. Yeah, so I'm enjoying it. I'm going to do a separate review on that. And then I am reading on my Kindle. I won't bother to bring it up. Um, a book about Neanderthal man or humans, you know, homonyms, <laughs> homonyms, however you say it. Um, and it's very interesting. It's slow reading. Um, I'm, I haven't been in the mood to read difficult stuff. It's not that it's that difficult, but I'm not that science minded. And so reading something that's really uh, scientific is um, a little, you know, takes extra brain cells uh, because we had my, my husband had this weird medical thing that I don't want to go into happen on Valentine's day. We spent almost 24 hours in the emergency room. He came home and he has slept for the last four days. He's just slept. Um, and so it's been a little bit <clears throat> disconcerting and it just threw, it threw me off my groove. Um, but uh, so I haven't picked up the Neanderthal book. It's called Kindred, Neanderthal, Life, Love, Death and Art. And it's really fascinating. I'm really into Neanderthals, but I'm, this is just going to be slow going. I have through March. This is for Historathon, which prehistory was um, January, February, March. So I still have time for this. And then um, I just uh, picked this up. I started to read it a few days ago and then dropped it. But now I'm trying to read it, get it done this long weekend. Because if you're in the U.S., it's a President's Day weekend. So we have Monday off. So I'm trying to get this read. But this is for the Faded Pages uh, book club that Shondi Stanfast has. Um, Black Narcissus by Rumor Godden. And I really want to read more by Rumor Godden anyway. Um I had a little bit of trouble getting traction, but it's very foreboding. 
And so when my husband was going through his thing, I really didn't feel like reading anything dark. I wanted, I wanted to read The Little Minister, which has a lot of warmth and charm to it. Um, this is different. This is like a psychological thing going on, and it's kind of creepy. Um, so you know something bad is, something really bad is going to happen to these people. Um, I have never seen the movie. Apparently there's a famous movie with Deborah Kerr. And then uh, FX, which I'm not really familiar with, I've heard of, they made a series uh, based on it. It's about a group of nuns in India who go off to start a new convent up in the, like the foothills of the Himalayas. Um, and, you know, there's something really creepy going on. <laughs> so anyway, that's as far as I've gotten um, this week. Is there anything else? I don't think so. It's been a weird week. So that is my, um, my update and my review of The Little Minister. And I'm about to go to the store and buy some dinner, some food for dinner. It's, it's not even eight o'clock in the morning, is it? What time is it now? No, it is just eight. But anyway, I'm trying to get the day settled um, so I know what I'm doing. So anyway, so that is it. Um, oh, yeah, and I'm, I'm tomorrow, because I can't do two things at once. It's too overwhelming. Today, I'm just planning food for today and the rest of the week. But tomorrow, I'm going to do my Feb Regency party shopping and because I'm making special uh, Regency era food or some of it anyway tomorrow and uh, I mean um, for the party and so I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on that tomorrow and um, I bought I wish I, I had them I don't have them I bought these a facsimile of the cards they played with so this was actually 1750 so maybe a little bit earlier but they were still playing these type of cards during the for Regency but they don't have the numbers I'll show them another time like when I review Evelina or something I'll show them but uh yeah I got them and so that's gonna be kind of fun we can play whist with the more authentic playing cards all right that's it from me I hope you are doing well and happy reading bye-bye